Okay, this is the first in the series of Under the Hood videos, which is looking primarily at Luminar AI and just what's going on within the software itself. First one, this one here, is just basically the interface for Luminar AI and navigating around the interface as well. And I'll just go through all this. These videos will be quite short. Perhaps this one will be the longest of them all because once we get into the editing side of things, I'm going to show you which each panel does individually. So the videos should remain relatively short in terms of what they are going to show you. It's mainly a kind of dive in, dive out type video and that will show you what it can do. So without further ado, let's dive right into the first one. When you first dive into Luminar AI, you'll see many things going on with it. Like you have the film strip down here, you have the menus up here, you have the templates on this side, and once you get into the editing, that will change down here as well. You also have the template that you're using, and you can adjust the opacity of that in there and put it to 100% opacity. What we're going to start with first is the basics. So under the title, I'm running this on a PC, so under the title of Luminar AI, if you click that, you'll see you have File, Edit, Image, View, Account, Window and Help. And the good thing about this, it's all contained in the one area, as in it's off to the side and it's not dropping down through your screens. I find that really, really, really useful when it comes to working with it. Within that, you have Catalog, New, Open, Show and Explorer, Open, Recent. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I tend not to create catalogues within Luminar. I either work from Lightroom or work from the hard drive itself. But if you this is your only editor and this is your single editor, you can create catalogues. You can mark your images for the ones that you want to reject and the ones you want to keep. So I'll show you that in a second as well. So we have catalog, add new folder with images, You'll also notice that up here, we've got Add Catalog, Edit Single Image, if I click there, Add Folder with Images, Edit Single Images, and then we have Catalog, and that will take me to the Catalog view, and it will show me all the photographs, 2017, 2016, Single Image Edits recently added, right down to the ones that I've trashed. For me, I'm going to go back into my Single Image Edits, which included the picture you saw there. So I'm going to jump back to here and I'm going to get into my single image edits. If I double click on that image, it pops up again back to the first screen that you saw. And I don't know if you noticed, but the refresh each time is up here. If you're a user of Luminar 4.3, you'll notice it said it down here, but now it's up actually in the title itself. Jumping back into this menu, we have file, which we've seen edit, which is undo and redo and you'll see as I said I'm using a PC so the shortcut keys are actually added within the menus itself so you've got undo which is control and Z for me or command and Z on a Mac. We have image this is where I said you could pick and you could reject images or leave them as it says here unmarked. If you're familiar with Lightroom and how the cataloging system works in there, it's the same key for that, it's the same hot key which is P which was flag as pick. Uh, and we have X and U is unmarked. We also have adjustments that we can make to our images before we even start or once we've started and you can see that the shortcut keys for them are there. Move to Luminar, Trash, Show and Explorer. Then we can go in to View, which is the catalog, which is already selected. Templates, which is over at the side there, and you'll see that appeared with the templates. I'll go back into View, and we can go Edit, Export, Raw and JPEG pairs, Show Raw only, Show JPEG only, depending how you catalog and depending how you bring your images in for this. Show Film Strip or Hide Film Strip. So if I go back into View, and show film strip. You'll notice that there isn't a shortcut for that one. We can then go in, zoom into 100%, fit to screen, compare, which compare is the before and after, and that is the semicolon key, and show histogram. The histogram, again, does not have a shortcut key assigned to it, but if I click that, the histogram will appear up here. And right now you're seeing the red 
of the histogram. If I click within it, you'll now see the green, you'll now see the blue, the lighter, and there's the entire histogram for this image here. So that's up to you whether you want to show it or not. You can also go in and turn on the highlights and turn on the darks, and that way you know if you've edited too far, you will get the resulting red or black within it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to turn them back off, back in here. Account will take you to anything within your account. We then have Window, Minimize and Zoom. So if I minimize it, it disappears and it goes back to this screen here. I'll just click back on it. If I go for the Zoom, and this is just telling you the image that it's currently on. If I go for the Zoom, I can zoom in and the plus will appear and I can zoom in that way. I have a roller mouse, so I can also zoom in and zoom out using the roller mouse. That I find really handy as well. Then we can go down to help and that will tell you about Luminar AI, what version it is, check for updates as you know, the user guide, the video tutorials, Skylum Academy, everything there will take you to the Luminar site or mostly everything there will take you to the Luminar site. So that's what's contained up here. Again, you can see along the top, it does what it says in the tin. So you've got the templates, which is this panel here. Edit, which takes us in to the editing panels, where if you've applied a template, you can then go in and adjust everything that's in that. And then we can go for export. I'll leave the export to last. Down here, I can cycle through my images just by clicking on them. And I can also use the arrow keys on the keyboard. And I am going to go back to one image in particular. I'm going to go to that one. And the reason I'm going to go to that one is because if I right click on it, I can then again go in and set the flag. I can rotate it, adjustments, export, go to images from same date. And that will take me into my catalog and my library from there. Create an album, starting with that image. Remove from single image edits. Remove from, uh, move to trash. Show an explorer and hide histogram for that image. The one thing I wanted to show you there was adjustments. I can revert to the original in here. I can sync adjustments if I select other images and then once they are selected, in my case I hold down the control key and select them, and then sync adjustments. And whatever I have applied to this image will go through the rest. So that's a handy feature as well with this. I can copy the adjustments and then go into another catalogue entirely and paste the adjustments into whatever one I want. Uh, or I can go revert to original and that will take it back to that image. So that's again another handy feature and hopefully now that will let you see where that is. Templates can be found over in the right hand side of your screen and the AI technology, what it does is it reads through thousands and thousands and thousands of programmed images and decides that yes, this is a portrait. What do you want to do with it? Here's the recommendation. That's what the AI side of Luminar AI is. So it can be any image at all. If I jump straight away into a landscape, it will scan the image. Once it's scanned the image, it will say easy landscapes, scenery, natural skies. So it lets you know that these are the recommended templates to use for your image, which is a really handy feature. And as I say, that's the AI side of the software. I'll go back into the portrait. You'll notice it's updating here. And then it comes back and it says easy portraits, experimental, monochrome. So if I choose monochrome and then go into, for example, elegant matte, that's what I get with this. If I'm quite happy with Elegant Matte, I can pull back on that slightly by going down here. And what I can do is I can adjust it slightly and you should see some of the color coming back through. So that's me turn down the opacity of the template effect. And that's an overall for all the edits that make up that template. That's pulling them all back to just apply it at this. That will be around 50, 60%. So there, there it is at roughly 50%. The three dots here, I can also click in them and then I can choose edit or reset adjustments. If I choose reset adjustments, it goes back to my original file, my original image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go elegant matte. I'm going to pull it back to around 50% just so that I've got some colour back in it. I can now jump up here and go to edit or I can jump in here and go to edit. And what that does is it opens up the editing panels. 
and everything with a white dot tells you the edits have been made. So you know that the optics have been adjusted here. And if I go into the essentials panel, the light has been edited, the enhanced AI has been edited, black and white has been edited. You can see in the portrait mode that the face AI has been edited, skin AI, and that's it for this one. And in the pro panel, the optics have been edited. So that's all the edits with that template. So from here, I could go back up just to check these. I can get into light and I can see that smart contrast has been pulled back by minus 21. I can see that enhance AI has been pushed to 51. Black and white has been converted to black and white as you would expect with this image. Portrait, face light, I can see that there's a face light being added to this. Get into the eyes, I can see some of that has been adjusted. Get into the skin, I see that the skin has been pushed to 25. So you get the idea of how the templates work and how they affect the image. The white dot lets you see what has been applied to a template. So light, enhance, black and white. So that's the basic layout of Luminar. Within this I have got the before and after, which is also the semicolon key in the keyboard. If I just press that there, you'll see it goes back. If I press it again, it comes back on. So it just depends as an editor how you work, how you want to use Luminar, whether that's via the shortcuts or whether that's via the user interface within it. I also have before and after here, which you can just press down with the left mouse key. And I can also go in and zoom in and out using this. It is down to you, it's entirely your preference. I'm zooming back out using the roller on my mouse. Last but not least, I have the export options. I have save to disk, mail, smug mug and 500 pixels, depending on what ones you use and where you want to send the image. If I choose save to disk and I click save photo to disk, from here I can choose the format that I want to save it in and you have quite a few formats in there depending on what you want to use. I'm going to choose J JPEG or JPEG, however you say it. Sharpen, I am going to go high for this one. Resize actual size or I can change it. If I want this to go straight to Instagram for example, I can choose long edge and I can resize the long edge here. For me, I'm always 2000 pixels for Instagram and I think Instagram itself is 1090, but I always go 2000 with it. And I also have the color space as well. sRGB, Adobe RGB, a pro photo, depending on where you're taking the image next. If it was online, sRGB, resolution 240, Quality, 75, or you can take it to 100. 75 is the default. I'm going to go back and go actual size and resolution, for me, 300. And it's going to tell me where it goes. So if I browse, I can put this straight to my desktop and I'll just create a new folder here. New folder, and we will just call this one Luminar AI test and I'll click select folder, choose it, select folder and so this is going to go in at JPEG, high, actual size 6496 by 4872, color space sRGB, resolution 300 pixels per inch, click export. Okay that's that image exported but what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-export it and in this case I'm going to re-export it at 2000 pixels just to let you see the difference. So if I click save to disk, save photo to disk, I'm going to resize to long edge and I'm going to make the long edge 2000 pixels, sRGB resolution, I'll just leave that at 300 and if I click export, do you want to replace it? I'm going to keep both in this case, I didn't rename it there, so I'm going to keep both. And then I'm going to minimize this. So here we have both images that I just created there. And here we have the first one, which was the full size image. And if I just go in here and view actual size, so you can see the image there. So that's how it is when it came out of Luminar AI. This one here was the one I resized at 2000 pixels. And I'll just go view actual size. And there we go. 
So you can see the difference, but if I zoom them back out, there isn't too much of a discernible difference if you were using these online. So I'll dive back into Luminar AI now. Hopefully that lets you see just a quick whistle stop tour of the user interface. If you're new to Luminar or any of the Skyom softwares, this may help, but I'm sure that Jim Nix or someone else will be creating similar videos. So I would highly recommend jumping across to watch Jim Nix tutorials and anyone else who educates and does tutorials within Luminar AI and in fact any of the Skyom softwares, because the more information you have, the better you will become at the software. So don't feel done by that I haven't shown you cataloging. I don't use it and I would be failing you if I was telling you how to use it. So that's why I have stayed away from the cataloging side of things. Hopefully you'll join me for the next videos. The rest of them will be really short because I'm going to get through some of the templates and how to adjust them. I'm then going to get into some of the panels and I'm going to go through the panels individually and show you how they quickly change and what effects they have within an image. Those videos will be really, really short, but they will build up into a library of how to use the software. They're meant to be, as I said at the beginning, they're meant to be drop in, drop out tutorials. In between these videos, I'm still going to be releasing the editing videos. Uh, so hopefully these will all build up and it will allow you to become more fluent in the software and the editing as well. Remember, stay safe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.